So welcome everybody, my name is Paul, I'm a country realtor out in the western part of Virginia. I live near Waynesboro, Virginia. And I'm a big fan of homesteading and country living and I specialize in that type of property in my business and I love sharing different information that might help people in finding a home and finding a nice homestead to raise their family or retire to. So today I'm going to share a bunch more books with you guys. Uh, it's really some really interesting stuff here. And uh, specialize, I'll talk a little bit about ponds for a while, a bit later in this video. So I hope you stick by with me. We've got about 12 books or so. The Harold Smith Reader, kind of an odd title, but it's all about country living. And I guess this copyright is probably the 1990s or something, maybe the 80s. But it's one of many types of books that you can buy. This one has a lot of different little articles about different stuff. Remedies for the old homestead apple. Just a lot of really interesting stuff about soil and gardening and various kinds of crafts that people have made over the years. Autumn, up in parts of the Northeast, many people know, of course, maple syrup is a, a wonderful, delightful thing. And the, the early settlers found out about that uh, long ago. So, another little quick book here. Uh, this is about 2011. Um, Finding out in what little ways that you can make your homestead a little bit more energy efficient. Maybe you can't go all out and spend a ton of money immediately on a huge system to control your old house electrically with solar panels and so on. But there's a lot of different design features and things, little products that you can get and the way you design your home uh, that make it a little bit more efficient. So go find this book. Square foot gardening. This guy was very, very popular for a while. Uh, I tried that. Actually, my wife, my ex-wife used to try that. But it's a system that he uses to make it really simple to garden. And basically in small areas, you can, uh, you know, use uh, 12 square feet or 4 square feet. But basically the whole idea is to have compartments and raise a whole bunch of different crops at once. So it's kind of an interesting approach. I personally uh, don't practice this because I'm not a really big gardener. But... Um, it's just something I'd like to share with you guys, the square foot gardening. Another really important book here, folks, you got to get something about preparedness. Every homestead and uh, on the countryside, things can happen. You can get bears, possums, uh, rabbit animals, snakes, various kinds of insect bites and plants and things. And it's just a really good idea to have some basic first aid and how to pre prevent a lot of things and... Uh, solve a lot of problems like for example there's mosquito bites in the old days they just uh, didn't have a place to go down to the store and get something for mosquito spray so they had to uh, do something like uh, when I was little if I got bit by a, a stinging nettle or something or a bug and then I just rubbed some a special leaf that we found as kids have grown wild and you just rub it on us and it kind of takes the itch away so there's a lot of really cool stuff this book here making the best of bakes family preparedness handbook <clears throat> Um, quickly here, sun spaces. You know, I'm a realtor and I see a lot of homes and I'll tell you what, there's a lot of really modern new homes that they're just frankly just very boring, totally boring. And if you're going to live in your home for a while and they appreciate the value, try to do something in your house with plants, with lighting, with just open areas that you feel like you're in indoors and outdoors at the same time. It's just a lot of really beautiful ideas in this book here to design. I mean, this one here, for example, like, wow, <laughs> that's probably very expensive. But you don't need to go all, all the way with all glass. There's a lot of smaller things that you can do in your home that add a little bit of touch of light and, and plants and so on. <clears throat> Quickly here, another really interesting book. I encourage people to check into sundials. <clears throat> The theory in construction, you know, before we had clocks and everything, all you youngers out there, uh, even before me, they just didn't have uh, clocks really. You had a sundial in your yard and you got a rough idea what time of day it was because it was well marked and so on. So there's a science to it and there's a certain geometry to it depending on where you live. But basically you put a stick down and as the sun goes around, you can see how it makes very various, various shadow angles. And uh, you mark them and you, it's a fascinating thing. And again, as a realtor, when you go to a property, if it has some neat little feature, maybe you're not going to tell time with your sundial, right? But it's a really nice, nice garden feature. And it's a conversation piece. And 
frankly, every time I see one, which is rare, I rarely ever see a home now with a, a sundial. But when I do, it's usually in a beautiful garden setting and a nice design, maybe with some tile or mosaic or something. So check into this one. <clears throat> A little bit about tools here. I'm getting to the ponds. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about ponds for a bit. The woodworker's Bible. You know, long ago, people had to build their own furniture. Now, we're probably not going to build all our own furniture, but I'll tell you what. I built a few pieces for myself and friends and things and bookshelves and so on. And the thing about it, you can build it a lot stronger yourself. And if you have a, a creative uh, bone in your body you can go out there and get some tools and and learn some of the old practices that basically they had simple simple tools they had little chisels and knives and kind of different things that they use hammers and mallets to, to put together furniture sometimes they didn't even have nails they used pegs and holes and so on they just drilled a little hole and put a peg in there so I found this book very very fascinating the woodworkers bible it's cheap as heck, you know, I got it at a thrift store for like a dollar, you know, and there's so much beautiful information in here that I can consult and I recommend it for anybody who's interested in getting into the woodworking. Another really super book about tools. Got to check this. This was presented and made before the modern, modern tools. I mean, it's, it's in the 90s and 80s, but it's not super modern computerized like but boy, it goes into almost every kind of tool you can imagine. It gives diagrams of it, and a, sometimes a history of it, and various kinds of files, for example. And my goodness, you didn't even know that there were so many kinds of tools. And, you know, there's things that you can do around your house to save a ton of money. I mean, for example, if you can open a bag of cement and pour it in a wheelbarrow and put a little bit of water in and mix it around and pour it onto a mold on your driveway or on your walkway, you can make yourself a patio or something. And it's not as difficult as one might think, and I talk about this in a lot of other of my videos, just make your property somewhat unique and beautiful and harmonious that, uh, that if you ever have to sell the property, wow, people just come there and go, wow, it's well maintained and has a, a really special look to it. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about ponds here because ponds are really, really important. I get a lot of requests for people who look for land and they want to buy a pond, a land with a pond on it. And I tell them, you know, Virginia has tons and tons of streams, and we do have quite a few ponds, but there's not nearly as many ponds as there are streams. Now, the thing about ponds are there's a lot of different kinds of ponds, okay? And some of them are really big, and they really require engineering and special kinds of damming and equipment and so on to, to build. But there's other kinds of water features that you can put on your property that really are small, but even a small water feature on your property, something, a little fountain with a little pond or something, it attracts insects, it attracts birds, it attracts hummingbirds and <clears throat> bees and things like that. <clears throat> it's just a really nice feature to have. It might even attract some frogs and first the worms and so on. So any kind of water feature on your property is going to add value to the property, but it's also going to be integrated into the into the rest of nature because there's fire, air, earth, and water. And it's really beautiful to have a water feature on your property. So if you don't have one, or if you, the land that you want does not have any kind of water feature on it, at least look for places on the land that maybe you could make a small water feature someplace, maybe a, a little gully or something, or maybe a slight rolling part of the property where you know, you can collect the water and build a little something around there. and It doesn't even have to be a big pond. It could be like 10 by 10 feet or something like that, or even smaller. So, I'll tell you some books that I found that are pretty, quite interesting, just quickly here. Garden Ponds. And, again, from a real estate point of view, if you're going to make a pond, make it really beautiful. Do something special with it. <clears throat> Here's one lined with some rocks. You might find some beautiful rocks on your property that you can put around the edge of your pond and uh, the frogs can sit there and you can get some various kinds of plants and there's a lot of native plants that grow and love to be around water so you can ring your little little pond with some beautiful flowers and uh, then there's you can get into maybe getting some fish in the pond uh, there's lots of kind of fish that maybe eat the algae and keep the pond clean kind of so again this book here is called uh, Garden Ponds by Dick Mills and you can probably get this Cheap as heck somewhere on, on eBay or, or on uh, Amazon. Earth ponds. 
Now we're getting into some larger types of ponds, okay? And it requires some really careful thought and maybe even a survey and some engineering uh, attention to really get a big pond. And a pond can change the character of a whole area, not just your own property. So if you make a pond, for example, that's a, an acre or three quarters of an acre or something, Boy, that pond is going to influence like 20 acres or 30 acres around because the birds and all the animals will come there and the deer and so on. So you want to be careful when you build an earth-based pond, but um, this book might be helpful to you, Earth Ponds by Tim Matson. <clears throat> Another one here, you can get these kind of books everywhere. You can get the older editions if it's cheap as heck, you know. Um, how to build ponds, ponds and fountains. Now this one isn't one of the modern ones that you get at Lowe's or something where the new ones have all the color glossy pictures but basically the, the principles are the same and you can get a lot out of this book. Think about where where the natural flow of water might be on your property. It's great to have moving water and if you can't get moving water through a natural stream or something or a spring Put a little fountain, even a solar power fountain, that during the day at least, when it gets sunshine, it'll be bubbling and distributing a little bit of the, the water and oxygen. So think about the flow of water. It's really nice to have like a cascading type of thing. Like here you have one pool that flows down to another pool to another pool. So there's a lot of really cool stuff that you can get. Get some ideas. And again, make your property interesting. And for the resale value, it's going to be very helpful if you, if you do that. Um, again, another type of book that you can get in a lot of these different stores here, Garden Pools and Fountains. This one has a lot of really great color pictures. You can probably pick these books up for a dollar. Again, using the rocks on your property or logs or just something extra, some feature that you don't have to go down to the big store and get a, uh, a pallet full of rocks or something. You might just look around your own property and find plenty of rocks. And uh, even sometimes you can find some clay. And sometimes people even have like springs on their property they don't even know about. So once again, another book about garden pools and fountains. Now this is one more big book about uh, garden, uh, water garden. Again, make your property beautiful. It doesn't have to be large. Like this, they put it on the cover of this book, and oh my God, that's like a lot of thousands of dollars of rocks and <laughs> excavating and all that to make that. But you can get a small water feature on your property, and you can get these little battery-powered electric pumps that recirculate water, so you might have the appearance of a much larger one. But look at this one here on, on this side over here, where it just it's not that big, it's not that deep, but it has beautiful rocks and vegetation around it, and probably some salamanders and various kinds of insects and dragonflies and birds will be attracted to a pond like that. So, again, about ponds, it's a really great thing to have from your from the real estate perspective of owning it because it integrates nature, you know, with all the elements. Because typically a rural property will have a bunch of trees and soil and everything and rocks, but it's so nice to have at least one water feature. On my property right here, I have a little gully. I just got this property a few months ago, and I'm kind of seeing a place where some water tends to go down after rain, the way to lay. It's not a steep slope, but there's a little bit of a gully there, and if I can emphasize that and maybe line it a little bit, I might be able to have kind of an oblong type of pond, more of like a long oval or ellipse, you might say, uh, with a little small dam at one end and just have a beautiful pond that's maybe, you know, 50, 100 square feet or something, no more than that. And that would be awesome because all the, all the birds and all the things that you, you know will come to a pond like that. So I hope you enjoy my book recommendations. I love sharing books and I have a lot of them myself. <laughs> and uh, frankly, you know, I just passed 100 subscribers on my new channel here and I'm thinking of just sending a book about homesteading to one of my subscribers because I feel like you know I want to share uh, in a really practical way and I'll have to figure out how to do that here but um, for example I might even start a Patreon program where if people actually donate I'll actually send them a book they'll get something for for the donation but if I have a lot of books and I'd love to share them and some of them I got so cheap that I don't mind just giving them away. So anyway, I hope you contact me. I'd love to see other people's content. I really enjoy the feedback and everything. Um, homesteading is a more of a community type of life. 
we need each other and share ideas on how to save money, make money, and build our homestead. And again, my name is Paul Smyers. I'm a real estate agent out in the western part of Virginia near Waynesboro in the Shenandoah Valley. That beautiful, beautiful Shenandoah Valley. I hope you watch some of my other videos because I have a lot of other content that I uh, have made about various aspects of buying and selling real estate in, in Virginia and how to find and identify a really great homesteading type property. So again, my information, there's a contact video here on, on here and my I work for a particular real estate agent, uh, broker Lions Team Realty. And uh, I live here in a beautiful Shenandoah Valley near the Blue Ridge Parkway. So thanks again for listening. I hope to see some of your comments and watch my other videos.